Hello guys, today we are going to play a free for all match, 5 player free for all match to be precise, on a beautiful map Belfalas in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on a patch 2.22. And we get to play the Isengard faction. Oh yes, Isengard, the White Hand. Okay. So I like to open with an economical opening, double furnace, and then we can capture those settlements next to our castle. Isengard is actually a very solid faction in a free-for-all match because you have like a huge power spike by unlocking the freezing rain ability. It means if there is a Mordor opening or Rohan opening, you can shut them down completely as those factions are relying heavily on the leadership bonuses. And the good thing is, our buff settlement should be in a good spot, and they are really close to the castle, so they should be hard to reach for the opening. However, the map Belfalas, if you don't know, is kind of like a small map, and there is almost no gap between us and the opening players. So we can creep this at the beginning of the game with the war chant, and at the beginning also after this, we will uh, be building up more and more furnaces, and then recruit first of all the fighting Urukai himself, Lourdes. That is going to be the plan. I don't know man, I personally enjoy the Isengard gameplay quite a lot because Isengard feels so much faster and it doesn't only feel faster, it is actually faster. So you have the best um, and the strongest and the fastest swordman in the game. Your infantry is moving genuinely much much faster. Hold on a second. Don't touch my money. And yes sir, I got both the money. Hey hey hey, he's mad now, he's molding. And look at this, you know, our tower is even able to, to defend the settlement. It's actually a very great situation for us. Keep in mind that in free-for-all matches, everybody, you know, normally everybody is picking random and you also don't get the chance to choose a spot. Everything is randomized. And there are like some golden rules set in the stone, which for example is that you are not allowed to buy a second castle, you are not able or you are not allowed to team up. But the second rule I just mentioned is being broken every single time against me. So <laughs> I'm used to it, you know. The Hobbit, Meriot of Brandybog, you cannot escape. So our money is not looking too shabby. Uh, we need one more furnace and now we can start to save up for Lourdes. That is going to plan. And uh, I can't even talk. That is going to be the plan now, <laughs> finally. Dude, it's all 80 now. Okay, nice. Nice, nice, nice. We killed the Hobbit. We can now recover a little bit. We were also able to save this. That's even better. Our Urukai are all about to hit level 2. That's going to be a great power spike for the evil factions, which have otherwise no other option of recovery. And you see the distance, dude? You see that? How close this Rohan castle is to us. And also the top side players, Rohan. So we are actually in a sandwich situation, you know? We are top and bottom Rohan taking us, you know, we are in the middle of them. And Rohan is not easy to deal with. Uh, I believe cavalry is going to be kind of meh on a map like this. Once again, the reason is simple. The map is kind of slow. Uh, not slow, but small. That's what I'm trying to see. And I even didn't know that. <laughs> you see, there is a settlement right in front of our castle, which I didn't know about, guys, by the way. Because I normally don't play a 5-player free-for-all. I used to play 4-player free-for-all matches on the map Mirkwood, or a 6-player on the map Dimriel Deal. But Belfellas is definitely a map I normally don't play on, because I believe it's either good for 4-player or 6-player, but 5-player is meh, you know? They're attacking us! Okay, we are in a very good spot. We are in a very, very good spot. Our eco is looking phenomenal. We have three furnaces. And if you are playing evil factions, regardless if it's Isengard or Mordor, if you can keep those three settlements protected for a long time, not only you will get a huge wood bonus, making all your structures cost way less, but also you get a lot of money boost. And that's going to be important for Isengard. Yes, Isengard's eco is unmatched. But keep in mind that Isengard is also the faction which needs the most money for the armory, for all the upgrades. You know, when you have no furnaces, and by the way, furnaces are essential for the Isengard faction to make your upgrades cheaper, because without them, you know, you cannot afford to upgrade one single unit. So let's creep this slowly but surely with Lourdes, and then we can also get armory first. You know, make sure to purchase everything, then we can start finally recruiting some. Uh, units. What we can also do is we can actually save up for Saruman. Right before we make combos, we can also recruit Saruman. Saruman is actually very underrated, but a very super powerful hero. And maybe in this game I will get the chance, guys, to show you how powerful the White Wizard of Isengard is. It's them. They're 
<laughs> great, great, great. So heavy armor first. Oh, look at this peasant. I want to give the last hit to the to lords, by the way. Don't worry. I want to just, you know, keep focusing down the lair. And lords can in the meantime defend. Because my goal is to get these lords to level 5 ASCP. To unlock the additional damage leadership. So, when it comes to deal um, with any army, really. But especially with Mordor. What you need is more DPS. And for the Isengard faction, that is only possible. Besides the War Channel, of course, from the Spellbook. If you get your lords to level 5. And on top of that, Lourdes also will grant you Fear Resistant, which also is essential against factions like Gondor with the Horn of Gondor from Boromir, and also especially against Mordor with all the Screech abilities from the Nazgûs and the Witch King. Okay, now we can build a Urukpit on the spot, and yeah, I mean, we didn't lose a single... Oh my goodness, what is this army? Hey, I think we need to abort the mission and actually go for, for Saruman, guys. Because we cannot get an army quite soon before this army can come to us. We, um, let's cancel the Urukpit because I don't think we can make it. I don't think we can make it. So we need to just sit here and hopefully we will have enough time to recruit the White Wizard. So demolishing the armory is going to slow us down, but it's okay. And we need a little bit more than 2,000. You know, a little bit more than 2,000. And then with the White Wizard, we can actually help us out. The good thing is the Rohan has fire arrow and Theorin, but he has no heavy armor yet. It means our fireball from Saruman is going to actually hit like an absolute truck. I want to creep this also at the same time. That's going to get those Uruks to level 2. That's going to be a great power spec. And we don't have to buy the banner. Right? We can only buy banner if the unit is level 1. And we can save this way also a little bit money. You know? Oh, hold on a second. Meriodok Brandybuck. What are you doing there, my friend? He's hiding. And Balindru left the game. Okay, the Rohan at the top side, <laughs> he left the game. I don't know what was actually happening between, between him and his opponent, but he just left the game. Okay, we need a little bit more. And that is Eoma, actually, dude. Eoma, leave me alone, man. I don't want to deal with two of you guys at the same time. So, you see, this Rohan, by the way, there are three Rohans included. You know that. There are three different Rohan factions included. So, three Rohans, one Isengard, and I don't know the faction of the top left player yet. But instead of attacking each other, they choose to commit against me. <laughs> you know, why you laugh me that much? I don't get it. I don't get it. I mean, I know why. Because I am a person who can hit like a truck and show his quality. You know what I'm saying? But still. Okay. I mean, the time is in our favor. What is actually happening? The game is frozen, literally. Oh my goodness. Please don't tell me. Oh, okay. But Indra is leaving. We can kick him out. It's no problem. Just kick him out. Okay. Nice. So here's Elven Warriors. But again, he has no heavy armor. And I will show you guys the power of Saruman. We can maybe commit on this also with Lourdes. We can eventually cripple him. The cripple is on cooldown, but we will get also money now. Okay, let's demolish the towers. Do not feed them. Saruman, come on. Ooh, the lightning. A new power is rising and victory is at hand. Theodin, you shall not pass. I mean, that normally Gandalf, like, Gandalf uses to say that Boom! Sun on your face! There we go, boys! And Lords is taking care of the King of Rohan. What else do you want? Two heroes, but two of them are hitting absolutely like a truck and proving they are... Oh my goodness! Hey, hey, hey! Watch this! Please, please watch this! Please watch this! Fight for me! And I will hold your own so field! <laughs> Let's go! I stole them all! I stole them all! Thank you very much! I didn't have an army, but now I have an army. And guys, 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 guys! Watch this! Watch this, please! Okay, I mean, the thing is, if you warm on them, you cannot control them forever. It's about 30 seconds, but as you can control them, we can actually use the whole ground stance. This way, they won't move. In the second, the control goes over to the opening player. Watch this. I don't want you guys to miss. Watch carefully now. Boom! Is this one of the juiciest without plus we have actually seen? What a play! I think this play was actually game winning and game deciding, guys. Please let me know in the comment section down below. I mean, I think the Isengard play didn't pay attention, but that's literally... Imagine one hero can do that. And that's why I believe Saruman is super underrated. He's definitely a match to heroes like Aragorn and Gandalf. Even though he has not a level 10 ability, he cannot destroy them. But, but, but why would you destroy them if you can... Steal them and make them fight for you. Boom! Fireball, dude. This Saruman, dude, he has shown so much quality in the last 60 seconds. Oh, we missed the cripple on... 
Okay, I mean, I was too excited, I believe. But it's fine. Dude, they are cash floating. We gotta make something happen now. We need to make units. What am I doing? I'm sleeping because I was excited. So it's now about to, you know, recruit units. And the good thing is, boys, we, have, we will have Warchant. We will have um, Lord's leadership. We will have Saruman leadership. That means we have in total 100 personal armor. Because 50 from Warchant, 50 from Saruman. Then we have um, 110 person increased damage. 60 from Lords, 50 from Warchant. So long story short, we will become a tank with like laser shots, if this makes sense for you. So we can also capture this outpost and start sieging. So the Rohan player who was trying to attack me is going to be the first target because I need to work my way slowly but surely up to the top. However, while doing that, I cannot ignore our opponent who is next to my castle. Because if I would do that, then he can attack me while I'm doing something else. So for that reason, he's going to be, you know, unfortunately for him, he's going to be our first target, boys. Okay, the siege works. We can recruit some ballistas, some rams, and then later on even some explosive mines and make a boom boom party. Let's recapture this with the worker. That's good. We can also send them eventually to the top side and recapture in even another one. Uh, sometimes my brain is lagging. Sorry for you know kind of mambling like. Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> Sorry for that. But you know I've been playing BFME a lot lately, and especially now because we are working on the new beta version of the patch 2.22. And everything is going to be so much better, guys. At least for me, you know, I like the speed and the, the fast gameplay. The next update will actually improve the infantry quite a lot. It's not going to be a direct buff to the infantry, but it's going to be actually like a buff to the movement speed. So basically, every unit, cavalry, infantry, heroes, everything is going to be able to move a bit faster. And I believe the reason why infantry was never like a meta thing in Battle for Middle of One is because... They were just too slow, you know? And cavalry was so much faster. They will still be much, much faster than infantry, obviously, but the movement speed gap is not going to be that big anymore as the percentages got decreased, if this makes sense for you. If you don't understand, let me know in the comment section down below or join the Discord to stay up to date with every change you make. I mean, overall, I would say, and I'm not biased, guys, I'm being honest with you. Overall, I would say that this is the badge, best patch ever made for Battle for Middle-earth 1. And we are also working, I mean, for a long time now on the campaign. And I don't want to spoil too much, but the new campaign hopefully will be released by the end of April. So stay tuned. And by the way, this Theorin is no more. Theorin, you know, Theorin. Theorin, what are you doing? Oh, he's trying to fight this. Oh, he's going to feed us so many power points now. We needed that. We genuinely needed that. Look, Aragorn is using Blade Master, but he has no Anduril, and we have so much leadership. Take this! Dude, this Saruman is popping off! Look, Aragorn, he's trying to show his quality, but he can. We have Lord's leadership, we have level 7 Lord's, level 7 Saruman. He's trying to catch us, but without Anduril, he will... I mean, even with Anduril, you cannot catch Saruman, because evil heroes like Lord's and Saruman, they have the highest movement speed. You can be equally as fast, but you cannot catch them, if this makes sense for you. Okay, the siege has begun. Oh, okay, I see you. You want to fight this? Are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? You want to start a civil war between Isengard? What are, what are you, a Saruman imposter? I am the real Saruman. I'm coming for you, bro. I'm coming for you, bro. Watch this. Watch this, boys. Watch this. The first priority target is, is Saruman. Oh, that's what I thought. Better run for your life. Why are you running? Why are you running? Do you guys know this? This meme, you know, why are you running? <laughs> that's... That's one of fighters. Oh, they have a fight between Rohan. Hey, I want to participate, boys. I want to participate in this fight. So, screw this Rohan. We can just keep breaking his wing, and I want to participate in this fight. I want to go there. Look, our units are shining bright like a diamond. Palanti to make them faster. Oh, that's going to be absolute clown fiesta. Saruman could cripple. Boom! Fireball! And who is the... Who is your daddy now? Who is the great wizard now? I'm not gonna give you the chance. Let's kill Lords first. So no more try. Oh, he's actually fireballing, but that's all he can do. Maybe we can steal. Never mind, he's moving. Saruman! And we have freezing rain now. What we can do is we can just switch the target and go for the other Rohan player instead. I think this Rohan player is done, so, right? He has nothing left. We killed his Aragorn, Theoden, Elma. He killed all his combos. I don't think he has the chance to come back to this game anymore. And in the meantime, capture the map control because you know what I'm what I like to see. Map control is the key to victory, and this is even applying on a map like Belfellas in Battle for Middle of One. So three furnaces, because you know you can always lose everything. There are like some. Oh look, you see, as I'm talking, my Saruman was running it down, and I would like to steal them. <laughs> you know, I would like to steal them all. Okay, after breaking it, 
I will go in. The reason why I'm confident to go in is because I know I have Freezing Rain. It means even if he has a statue or whatever, all the leadership is going to be pointless because Freezing Rain... Oh, Yoda also left. That was the Rohan play we broke the wall from. <laughs> so he's like, I cannot win this game anymore. He's gone. It means I have only two more opponents to defeat, boys. Only two more opponents to defeat. Dude, the power of Isengard. You see, the strategy from us was actually trying to get to the late game ASAP. And late game is with all. Okay, let's fight. You want to fight this? Are you sure about that? I mean, late game, Isengard, when you actually recruit loot early on, you will get the chance to get him to level 5, which is an important and massive power spike for the Isengard army. Okay, so watch this. Watch this. If also the heal, the will of Saruman, now unlocked from Saruman. Oh, look at this Elven Warrior. <laughs> These Elven Warriors are dropping the sword. They were watching too much Lord of the Rings in the two towers, you know? Charge! Um, what was Aragorn saying, actually? He was saying charge to the elves as the helms, you know, the deeping wall was broken by the explosive mine. Oh, theory. No, 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 no. Hey, can I steal them? I want to blast them, though. What was Aragorn saying to the elves after the wall? In Elvish. He was saying in English. Oh, dude, the Saruman is popping. Oh, dude, I cannot believe it. <laughs> by the way, those players are not paid actors, guys. Let me tell you that much. They are underestimating my Saruman. They are underestimating him. He's a wizard just like Gandalf is. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, by, by the way, let me know, guys, in the comment section down below if you know the Elvish word for charge. Like, if you're a feline or something like this, I know that. I think that was like when they were shooting at the wall. But what 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 was what was Aragorn saying to the elves is the deeping wall was broken. And by the way, the Rohan has been defeated. So all three Rohans, they are gunners, you know? They are gunners. They are oh now it's a civil war. Now the question is who is the better Isengard player? And I don't know if this I don't think that this guy can actually compete with our strength in terms of level. We have a level 10 combo, a level 6 combo, we have almost level 10 heroes, and I also don't think that he has the chance to compete with the PowerPoint department. It means I'm assuming we are much, much closer uh, to the power spank of the Balrog Special Summon. The question is, does he wanna, is he ready for this? Or do you want to fight this, my friend? Do you want to fight this? The Outpost? His corners? Oh, I want to fight this so badly. I want to fight this so badly. Burn every village! Okay, I want to use fire fireball on you. Watch this. Watch this. Take this. Boom. Sun level 10 Saruman. It's also something you don't see every single day. Fireball is so busted, guys. Low cooldown, you can use it over and over and over again. And every time it's hitting so extremely hard. Fight for me. Fight for me. Dude, this guy is always gifting me his... <laughs> He's always gifting me all his army. And his Saruman can do the same because my Lord is always on point. You know, my Lord is a sniper. Sniper of Middle Earth. I want to actually, my Saruman is quite healthy. I can even use the Will of Saruman after going for a juicy Visa Blast. Kill the Ballista. He's slamming with the Ballistas, though. These Ballistas are actually annoying me. They're actually destroying us. What the heck? Maybe we need to disengage here. <laughs> but in the meantime, you see, our Lamb and Mimorkas are actually fighting for map control. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's make more combos. We have so many command points available still. We can actually make like 8-9 combos at this point of the game. You don't want to cheese me, trust me on that one. Like, boom. Do it. The new ability is not crazy. You know, obviously when you... Hold on, what is this Lord doing? Oh, he crippled me. My fireball is stone cooldown. Let's kill this Lord. And then I want to actually fireball. Uh, level, level 10 Lords too. Oh, take this. Boom, watch this. Ballistas are knocking down my Saruman on the ground. Don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, please, Saruman, do it. He's so old, you know. He's like, oh, I gotta, I gotta stand up. But now he's fast. He's sprinting now. The fast and furious, you know what I'm saying? He's preparing for the next sprint competition. Those Ballistas, though, they're painful. They're painful. Especially the knockdown on the ground. That's what is actually so painful. Um... Okay, but we, we, we dealt with them. That's good. That's good. And also Saruman is healing up slowly but surely. Oh, he doesn't want to fight this anymore. And he just left the game and that's it, boys. A short game, but it was hopefully still fun to watch. If it was, please don't forget to leave a like. Let me know in the comment section down below what else do you want to see on this channel next. Until then, take care of yourselves. Keep hitting like a track and also stay beyond standards. Peace out.